real quick before we jump into this video. You guys know we love our CRF 110s. These bikes are perfect for the track, the desert, your local trails, or for turn rides in your neighborhood like this guy. These bikes are still super hard to get, but we want you guys to be able to join in on the 110 fun. That's why we are giving away this brand new 2022 CRF 110, right Zach? Oh yeah. Here's how you win. From now until September 15th, every $5 you spend over at workporterhero.com gets you one entry to win the bike. And I know we uh, sell out designs and stuff like that when we do these giveaways, but don't worry, throughout the length of the giveaway, we're going to be constantly restocking as well as unveiling new designs. So check the website out frequently. And whoever ends up winning the bike, if you're local, you're more than welcome to come pick it up. However, if you are not, don't worry, we'll ship it to you. What are you doing? Getting this bike ready to be shipped. We'll get this figured out a little bit better, but head over to workporterhero.com right now and get entered. Let's roll this video. What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. Now, a lot of you guys ask about um, certain vehicles. If you don't see them on the channel within like two videos, you think they don't exist anymore. Trust me, I'll let you guys know anytime I'm getting rid of a vehicle, buying a new vehicle, selling, whatever we may be doing. You guys are the first to know. So for everybody wondering about my Denali, I see comments all the time, you know, wondering where this thing is, if I sold it, if I got rid of it. Nah, man, she's just kind of living a nice retired life here off the ranch because I don't want her out in the dust storms and the dirt and the animals and all that. So she's here. Got the battery tender, she's always plugged in. We don't have any more dead battery issues. One of the other vehicles I get asked about an absolute ton is the fire truck. We'll get her fired up here. That way, you know, they're constantly circulating oil and everything through them and they're not just sitting forever. So let's fire up the fire truck. Now, the reason the fire truck is not at the ranch is because I don't necessarily think it is the right vehicle for the ranch for fire suppression. I know that kind of sounds dumb and doesn't make any sense because it's a fire truck. But for me, I like to be solo whenever I'm doing something, or at least have the capability to do it solo, just in case I'm by myself. Well, this here fire truck, fire engine, for uh, you know people that are gonna get upset, this ain't a one-man operation to run this thing. We've got our entire um, pump control panel right here with our valves and all the stuff you gotta run. Number one, I don't even know how to run this. I probably should figure that out one day. Um, I know I put APPs out all the time, but if you are local and you know how to run this, uh, shoot me an email and let's get a date set up because I need to run this thing. I am missing some things I'll show you guys here in a second. But anyways, pretty much takes one guy up here running the pumps and the valve. And then you need one guy down below here hanging off the end of the hose. And then God forbid you got to move this thing. You kind of need one guy to hold the hose while somebody else that drives this thing and moves. And I guess the pump guy could do that. But being, uh, you know, I've never really been around too many fire engines. Um, in my head, I'm like fire engine, fire protection. Let's just buy that. Plus I got a really good deal on it. And who doesn't want to own a fire engine, you know? I couldn't pass it up. But now that I own it, I've realized this, this is not the ideal fire protection vehicle for the ranch. I need a water truck. So I can sit in the cab, drive while operating the valves with sprayers on the truck. So one of the things I'm missing here on the old engine is I need a, I believe this is a six inch, um, I think this is a suction valve, but we need a cover for this. Probably need one here, this is a, left hand suction intake we might need a two and a half inch cover for that so i need a one of these otherwise i don't think we can build pressure i could be wrong but that's what i've been told and a one of these if any of you guys got one of these lying around let me know i'll uh i'll pay for you to ship it to me because without that i don't think we can operate the pumps so again while the fire truck is super super cool i just don't think it's going to work for me however we have talked about turning this into a party truck it's got an awesome aluminum deck up here. We could just build some rails, a nice roof for it, and make this thing into a super sick party truck. And then we have the 6.0, which a lot of people have been asking about recently as well. And well, the 6.0 is six dead. Let Papa Rhino drive this one again while his 450 is being torn apart to put the Kelderman lift kit on. And we are back to where we basically started the last three times it's broken with the no start issue. We believe, don't quote me on this, that there's something wrong with the oil cooler. It needs a new oil cooler. And what we think is happening is letting it, things get too hot. And then there's these little O-rings on the stand pipes that are melting and it's not allowing it to build enough oil pressure to tell the computer that it's okay to fire the truck up. That's what we believe is happening. I might send it up to the guys over at Domestic Diesel. I'm not sure yet. And uh, just let them go through this thing. And then we got Mama Rhino's Tahoe here. I freaking love the way that this thing turned out. You guys remember we built this for SEMA 2019 and it was lowered on some 26s and it actually looked really sick that way however my original plan with this thing was always to lift it from mama rana mama rana is not a, a lowered vehicle person she likes lifted vehicles super practical uh six inch mcgoy's lift here with the 35 inch four wheel parts tires and four wheel parts wheels and i think this thing looks freaking phenomenal and i wanted to step it up a notch just to keep it classy but still look kind of custom so we went ahead and vinyl wrapped 
from basically the hood up. I think it adds a really cool touch. I know like Range Rovers and all that, you get them from the factory looking like this. I really like the look. I think it's just super, super clean. However, that leads to today's video and the issues we got going on. Wall vinyl wrap looks great. I hate vinyl wrap. Like I, I hate it. I know I've used it on projects in the past. On my 2015 Silverado, I did the roof by myself, which was oof. Never do that again. And I've done little accent pieces here and there in vinyl. And while you look at Marano's Tahoe right here, you're like, oh man, that thing looks great. You see you driving down the road, you're like, oh man, that looks great. And well, you know, from about this distance, it looks freaking perfect. And then we get up close to it, and that's where you're gonna see why I hate vinyl. So she's a little bit dusty right now. So let's just get you guys a little close up here on the hood. What you're seeing here is not really watermarks. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's basically like water marks that have been etched into the vinyl. And again, from like, I don't know, 10, 15 feet away, you do not see that. Second you get up close, you're like, ooh, ooh, that doesn't look good. And it's mainly on the flat surfaces where water can basically come down on, whether it's moisture or dew or rain or hard water, but really hard water doesn't hit this thing because um, it's washed from Genesis Detailing, so it's always got DI water on it. But if you look at like the side panels or anything that's vertical, you'll notice like it doesn't really have as much of an issue as the hood there does. So pretty much everything from the roof down kind of looks great on the sides here, but man, does this, this hood does not look good. And this is what I hate about vinyl, or one of the many things I hate about vinyl. Vinyl does not last in the sun at all. I mean, especially black. And I don't care what brand it is. I've used like three or four different brands on different vehicles. Nothing lasts in the sun with the sun baking on it. If you own like a little car that you park in the garage every night and it only sees like, you know, three to four hours of sun a day, and it's always washed and put back inside, then no big deal. You'll probably get the vinyl to last for quite a few years. Again, I think we did this wrap in 2019. So we're almost at three years with this wrap, which is a long time for a wrap in my opinion. It has been kind of looking janky for at least over a year. Like slowly but surely, these little spots started showing up. Um, we tried to buff them out. Obviously, it's vinyl. There's only so much you can do. Literally like etched in. Like, like there's material missing where these little specks are. And let me show you guys the worst part of it. I mean, I have not looked at this close up yet. But I know it, it, it's it's gonna ooh, it's gonna be bad. Look at this freaking roof. This roof has just gotten destroyed. And I mean, thankfully it's on the roof because you can't really see it from bad. But oh, this is gonna be miserable. I don't know why. I don't. I don't know why. Just maybe for content for you guys. But I'm gonna I'm gonna try and pull this roof off today. Well, I'm gonna try and pull as much vinyl as I can today. And I've been worrying that it's literally gonna be this the entire time of <laughs> i hope we're not gonna end up doing this a half inch at a time but anytime something gets baked in the sun like this it just gets crispy and then you're gonna fight it i already regret this decision to do this but we're gonna take this to the shop we're gonna see how much of this vinyl wrap we can pull off today uh, once the vinyl's off, it's gonna go over to our friends over at Genesis Detailing. They're gonna buff off all of the adhesive and all the crap that is left on. They also share their shop space with a wrap shop, which was my original plan was to have the wrap shop pull this off, and it still might be, depending on how frustrated I get today or how far I do or do not get. However, it is practically just as expensive to put to pull a wrap off as it is to put a wrap on, because you, well, you see why. I mean, this wrap went on a nice one sheet or it's gonna come off in 42,000 little pieces. We'll see, maybe we can save a couple bucks today. Or my sanity's not gonna be worth it, but let's hop in the old Tahoe and head to the shop. Give you guys a little uh, mileage update on this thing as well. It has finally hit 5,000 miles. And most of those are because Paparano's truck has been down, so he's been driving this a lot, especially out to the ranch. So in three years, 5,000 miles have been put on this thing. Holy crap, is it busy in the alleyway today? All right, well, we got this big old semi in the way. We are not gonna be getting into uh, our shop. And it kinda doesn't look like they're gonna move for a minute. But that'll give me a minute here to uh, make some shop space. I'm gonna push everything to the side. I'm gonna scooch the forklift all the way over to the side, and I think I'm gonna use the forklift to like build a platform that I can then sit on top of or lay on top of to peel the roof. Obviously, I don't want to climb up on the roof of the Tahoe, so let's try to be smarter, not harder here. Holy crap, guys, that semi took freaking forever to get out of here, so the Tahoe ended up sitting in the shade over there, even though it's been sitting in the sun all day to hopefully soften that wrap up a little bit. So I've been letting it sit right now in the sun, but we're running out of time here, so we're just gonna pull in and see how far we get trying to peel this freaking wrap off. Let's get my ghetto scaffolding here set up. We've got our heat gun here, cause we sure as heck are gonna need some heat. Take the platform up, make sure we do not hit the paint.
Now we get to climb up there. Don't try this at home. See this? See this? Don't do this. Ooh. Thankfully, I'm not that heavy. 3 8 plywood works here. Yeah, this is gonna take forever. Look at this crazy how it's like unshrunk out of these gaps here where they basically heat it up and then push it down into where the ribs are on the on the roof. Let's see if it gets any better with heat. Oh, and I apparently it touched some very greasy spots there on the uh, forklift boom. This heat gun gets hot very fast. <laughs> it's like reapplying the vinyl. This is the opposite of what I want to do. Okay, it's getting a little better. It's getting a little better. All right, guys, it's looking better. It's looking better. Just gotta get a piece going here. Ugh. Thought we were doing good for a second. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. It's the biggest piece we've gotten so far. We should just let the sun keep going because clearly the sun's clearing it all off. Now I feel like there's a very fine line between hot enough to peel the vinyl and too hot to where the paint bubbles and wants to come with the vinyl. What that line is, I don't know yet. I hope we don't find it. Also burns the crap out of my fingers because this heat gun gets very hot. Oh, ho, ho. ow. Like the hot enough that makes it come off easy also makes it really thin and then it tears. Oh, that's a good piece right there. That's a good piece. Anybody that signs up to do this for a living. I'm glad there's people like you that make the sacrifice for the rest of us. Brings another good point here. Vinyl wrap is temporary, right? So you're gonna spend a couple thousand dollars depending on what type of vehicle and how much you're wrapping for something that's temporary. I've never gotten more than a year out of a vinyl wrap that actually looked halfway decent for that whole year. So for a couple thousand dollars for temporary, they're gonna have to redo every year, every couple of years. You gotta decide if it's worth painting it or not. Cause painting, let's just say you have a good painter. If anybody knows a good painter, let me know. Cause I would love to redo this and keep this black. I just don't know if it's worth vinyl wrapping again. Uh, Mama Rhino actually really loves this look. So I wanna keep it this way, but I don't know of a good paint shop that I trust to do this. So if anybody out there knows a good paint shop in Southern California, that you would trust, let me know. But back to my point, if you guys are gonna vinyl wrap something, be prepared to peel it off way before it gets this bad. We definitely missed the mark on this one. But keep in mind, you're also paying to peel it. So you're paying a couple grand to put it on, probably a couple grand to peel it off, and then are you gonna redo that? By the time you do that two times, you might as well have paid to paint the vehicle. We were doing well for a second there, guys. Now we're going backwards, I feel like. Oh, jeez, that's hot. <laughs> So we're about a uh, solid 30 minutes in here and I am so over this already. Oh, jeez, I almost fell off my scaffolding here. So you have to get it hot enough to where it wants to peel, but then when you get it that hot, it wants to tear. But if you go less than that hot, it leaves all of the adhesive on the vehicle. And I thought it was gonna be really hard to get this edge out right here that's tucked up underneath this trim, but that comes out pretty easy, I guess, because it hasn't seen the sun, so it hasn't really deteriorated the wrap. But there's probably better techniques out there to peel this stuff up. I should probably have YouTubed this before starting. Now, as I've worked my way down to the front here where it's not on the like direct flat surface where the sun just constantly baked on, obviously wrapping down the front there didn't quite get as much sun. It's coming off a lot easier to where I could see how if we pulled this off after like a year, it wouldn't be that bad pulling a wrap off. Curious as to how the hood is gonna be. It obviously didn't start peeling up quite as much as the roof, but it was also a pretty flat surface, which means it got baked like crazy. The other thing is if I decide to quit halfway through this, which there's no way I'm pulling all this off tonight, this thing's gonna look like crap until we get it to a wrap shop to actually have the wrap pulled off. So how bad do I want it to look in the meantime? That's another thing I've taken into consideration. If I peel the entire hood off and it looks like this, like that looks horrible. I'm gonna go grab my 3M eraser wheel right now and see if it'll like chew up the wrap and take it off. I mean, I know we're gonna eat through the wheel. These things go fast and they have gotten very expensive lately.
Well, it's not perfect, but it's better. Hey, Zach, are you YouTubing how to pull off <laughs> a baked on wrap? Yeah, 30 bucks on Amazon, it's called Vinyl Off. Will it be here by tomorrow? Wrap it, remover, wipe it on, wait a few minutes and peel off the vinyl and adhesive and one. Well guys, we gotta call it quits for the evening here, so this is as far as we got. But, good news, or bad news, bad news for me, good news for you guys, you're gonna see more progress. Bad news for me, I gotta come back and we're gonna try this again tomorrow. It's probably good we didn't start on the hood until we actually have enough time to dedicate to pulling off the I don't know. It's gonna look like crap. <laughs> Apparently the online adhesive removers have bad reviews, so I don't think that's gonna be our ticket. So see you guys back in the morning. Okay guys, we are back. I spent most of the day over at Dirt King. You guys blew me up when I unveiled my Baja kits, pre-running kit for the Bronco, and everybody's like, you need Dirt King, you need Dirt King, you need Dirt King. Well, stay tuned for the Dirt King video, which will come out in the next couple of days after this video. You are not gonna believe the transformation their shop their manufacturing facility and all that has made from the last time we filmed there. Plus we do address some Bronco stuff. But being that I spent most of the day up there filming, I don't have a ton of time for the Tahoe. Doesn't mean we're still not gonna try and get as much done as we can. Now I can definitely say I have not been looking forward to this part of my day, but. So I went ahead and brought the forklift uh, behind the Tahoe here. We're gonna try to address some of this back half. I'm gonna go until I'm over it on the roof today and then I think I'm gonna try to tackle that hood. Again, it makes me nervous that I'm gonna make this thing look like crap until we fully remove everything, but I just want one satisfying piece to come off. I don't know if the hood's gonna be that, because it's pretty sun-baked in the center there, but just, just give me one piece. But I will say, having a forklift makes this super, super easy to just sit hovering above the roof like this. I feel like yesterday we learned some stuff though, you know? So it's gonna go a little easier today. That, that, that's my glass half full kind of attitude that we're gonna have for today. And all these little stringy pieces off here. Even though there's really not much holding them on. There we go. Check this out, y'all, this is a trip. So I started peeling back here and obviously this had raised up over like where this hump is, the vinyl had raised up. So we're trapping a little bit of ooh, some nice water in there. It doesn't smell. We got to this back piece right here. This thing, I think this piece has to get taken off because I think it's wrapped around both edges. I'm not gonna do that. So <laughs> we're gonna jump onto the hood now because I have to flip the Tahoe around to be able to get the forklift onto that side. So let's see what happens with the hood. Let's see if you guys remember we did the embossed work for it apparel right there in the, under the, the hood wrap. Super last minute, but we wanted to brand it work for it before it went to SEMA. And SEMA's kind of weird about putting big old logos that aren't like automotive related or you're not a part of the SEMA council and you don't give them money every year. I don't know why this is so hard. It should be like the easy edge to peel up. There we go. I'm just holding out faith, guys, that we're gonna be able to kind of get a sheet here. Well, okay, spoke too soon, spoke too soon. We're probably gonna be good up to here. It's right here, you can see they're starting to get some holes, which means this whole area is super thin. All this is pretty softened up. Thankfully, the adhesive is coming with on this part. Okay, now I can see how if you pull a wrap on time, it's not that bad. Oh, whoa, 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 little tear, little tear, don't tear. Come on, booger. All right, guys, I got a new guy here. Oh, Jesus. Come on, you're already tearing stupid. it, man. This is stupid, pay someone. I'll give you 10 Sergio. bucks. I'll give Sergio 15, he's oh. more qualified. Hey, I'll give you, I'll give him another 15. You don't gotta use it, you're, you know, you're so That's you're why you're wrong. tearing it. No, I'm not, look at that, look at that. It's torn, look at it right there. Look at this, guys. We got a weird turn of events today. Chris is working. Sergio's the one sitting over here snacking. Crazy, crazy. Oh, you want some more heat? I'll give you, I'll give you a little heat, buddy. You know, I gotta fight this side that you already tore like crazy. Don't fold it over, bro. I gotta get in there, man. I gotta get the heat in there. I don't re-stick. Yeah, it does. Nah, barely. Yeah, look, Sergio's having fun. Yeah, yeah, having fun. Well, I'm trying to get as big as possible and then Chris comes is, over. Is it, time to, is it time to get paid yet? No, once it's done. 
Yeah. Once it's done, I, I, uh, you know how much it's going to cost you, right? Yep. You can charge um, okay. like 25%. This is going to end up tearing your spot. Yeah, because don't. Here's Let me give you some heat, buddy. Heat, I'm trying. Here, you want the gun? Right don't want to get too hot. I can hit it from here, man. This gun's got some power. Teamwork, boys. I don't want too much of it. Does that. Okay. <laughs> no heat. Are you decorating Sergio? <laughs> you made Sergio a nice scarf over there. Sergio's having a great time over there. I'm not. You see, Chris, it's all about being happy. See, we're all doing the same job here. Some of us are happy. Sergio, are you happy? Uh, well, I, really. I ate already. So Sergio just wants to go home. Yeah. Yeah, Sergio, we got this, buddy. We got this. As soon as he arrives right here, he's gonna. So, Sergio, man, remember you were the positive one. Uh, realistic. Oh, now you're realistic. Yeah. It's crazy how strong this stuff is when it wants to be and then it tears like it's nothing. Well y'all, we have gotten about as far as we can go productively. Sergio just got that last little piece up there that's gonna come off kind of in a sheet. The rest of this, it's like literally. Chris, give us a demonstration here. <laughs> I'm gonna try and use a little Bondo squeegee here. It's plastic, so hopefully it doesn't scratch the paint. I'm gonna try and heat and push. This is actually worse than the roof. I thought the roof would be worse, but the roof had already like cooked into like smaller pieces and it lifted up off of uh, the surface so it wasn't as stuck as this. This has been freaking miserable. Yeah, this ain't the ticket. I got a little piece started. Well, Sergio, I'm kind of making progress. Kind of. I'm scared, like, I gotta get it dangerously hot. <laughs> Sergio, look at this, buddy. Oh, well, look, we're leaving a little adhesive behind, but you know, it makes it come off easier. So I learned uh, more heat, definitely not the answer, just causes it to separate from the adhesive and leave the adhesive, and now it looks pretty much like the roof. Uh, Sergio's brought his uh, kid's heat gun here. And he worked. Okay, okay. And a uh, little plastic scraper. It's not a scraper. It's uh, it's a, a door opener? Yeah. <laughs> Such a horrible idea. This why, is how not to this? take off. Sergio, <laughs> you're the third idiot. The two idiots garage, now three idiots garage. What? He's giving it lessons. Oh, uh oh, this is gonna go bad. What, what do you mean he's gonna go bad? Oh. Go. Did you do your 30 minute online course? Of course I did. Oh, okay, good. So give, us some, give us some gas. Sergio, middle's the brake, left is a clutch and a brake. Sergio, come here, buddy. Let's see you pick up this table. Other way, Sergio, other way. Oh, Sergio. You oh, Sergio, you're going downhill. Oh Sergio, you're not in reverse. There you go. I go faster, you get high centered right there. Yeah, well. Yeah. It's gonna take off once it, once it hooks. There we go, there we go. All right, we got you unstuck. Sergio, you, you gotta come this way now, buddy. Oh, sorry. Well, let's make it a little easier for the guy. Come on in, Sergio. Just stay straight, don't turn angled. All right, go down with your fork. That way, Sergio. Sergio, you got back up a little bit, buddy. She's guy. All right, there you go, Sergio. All right, now come on in. Why are you guys telling me? I thought you keep it high on your forks. What? Oh, okay. You don't want him to go through this roll-up door? Okay, go go to you a little bit. Center up. All right, Sergio, come forward a little bit. Forward. Forward. There you go, yep. Now pull back on the closest handle to you. Yep. Keep going. Oh, the other handle, yep, that handle. Keep going. That's a little little off balance. Hold on. You guys. Where am I taking it? To your shop. My shop. Put it on the roof. And then pull back on the closest handle to you. Yep. Give it some gas. I don't think we want to break it. I, I don't. I think they put it out of the shop because they didn't have room for it. I think they're still keeping it. All right, Sergio. Now we got to put it back without putting it through the door. Are you sure they don't want it inside? Ease up, easy guy, easy guy. A little more. About two feet. 
And then once you're down, tilt your forks forward, which will be the other one. Yep. Keep going, keep going. Lower your forks a little bit more. Because remember, when you come out, it's, they're going to be angled up. You don't want to catch that front lip. All right, buddy, you're certified now. It's that easy. You can go work at Home Depot. I hate to say it. I'm throwing in the towel. I am so over this. We're just going to have to find a wrap shop that'll take this off. Chris, come on, man. You want to go stand out and watch a beautiful sunset? Oh, you're grumpy? <sighs> hey, man, I charged for that. Sergio, come here. Stand with Chris and watch the sunset. He needs somebody to hug. It's a little weird. It's a special moment we're sharing here, guys. Yeah. Special moment. Shh, okay. huh. Yeah, I've seen it before. Oh, okay. Well, we're gonna try to get on schedule of a wrap shop here. We'll see. Um, Mama Rhino loves the Tahoe as is. She loves the way that we did the black on there. Um, so it's either I find a body shop to repaint it or we pull it off and it ends up looking cool white and then we leave it white. I'm not sure, but we sure as heck are not rewrapping it. But with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please give the subscribe button now that you're not miss out on any future content. And don't forget to give this video a like, a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best, I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah.